Hi everyone, it's Molly. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here. What you are about to see is me tackling a four foot by four foot huge piece of artwork for a company, I think financial. This will be the second commercial commission piece that I have made for them. And this one is, I'm really nervous about it, honestly, because it's so big and I think I'm gonna have to work really fast. So what I am gonna do is show you a little bit of my process, show you the painting, and then I think I'll talk over a few pieces and give you kind of my insights, maybe what I would do a little bit differently had I done this again, um, and just some tips on working on such a large canvas. So I hope that you enjoy this one. Thank you so much for being here. Let's paint. Okay, so I thought I would talk you through a little bit of my thought process and what was going on when I was making this painting. The preparatory phase is very therapeutic for me. Mixing the paints, getting the canvas ready, it's almost like a little ritual that kind of allows me to set my intention before I actually start painting. And so I really enjoy this part of the process. But this is also where my nerves kind of get to me. I'm thinking, is it gonna work? Is it gonna be, you know, what I thought it would be? And you just have to tell yourself to just go for it. And it's just paint and you can, you know, scrape it off, start again. And I know it can be kind of nerve wracking because it's money that you're spending as well but it's just something you have to go for. For this painting, I actually mixed up all these big containers, but then I wanted to make sure that they were the exact same consistency because it's all going to go on one piece. So what I ended up doing was taking all the smaller containers and then mixing them all in this bigger bucket together. The reason that I used smaller containers to start was so that I wouldn't have any lumps in the paint so that I could mix it really well. And then I just blended them all together and then I poured them back out into these containers. This was a really big project and I mixed up more paint than I needed, but that's a recommendation that I like to give to people. Always mix up more paint than you need. It's so much more difficult if you have to go back and mix up more paint later. You may not have the right consistency. You may not have, you know, the exact color that you need. So I recommend you know, have a way to save your paint afterwards, but always try to mix up enough. So the colors were selected by the company that I was doing this commission for, and I color matched based on the Pantone colors that they gave me. I used those little TCP cups they're in my Amazon shop, but they are great for storing my paints when I make large amounts at a time. That turquoise blue color is gotta be one of my favorites and I love it next to the bright phthalo blue and lime green. Next you see there I had a couple clumps in my light blue and I had to get those out. Now, if I had done it differently here, I would not have poured that aggressively because you can see all the bubbles that formed. But I was really worried about the paint drying and me not being able to move the paint around because it's so large. And so I had to work really quick. 
So I'm just taking my torch here, an Urban Creator torch, and popping all the air bubbles and just making sure there's no lumps. And sometimes you may need to do this two or three times. Now I'm using my Loli Vethi scraper. You could use any silicone scraper or any spatula if you wanted to, but I wanted to get the paint kind of evened out. My hubby was there to help me with this one. So that was nice. And you can see all the paint pouring off. You want to make sure that you have an even coat, that it's not too thick in the center. I did not brace this in the center, but if your canvas is saggy at all, or you're worried about the paint pooling in the middle, you can always brace it with a large piece of cardboard or another piece of wood, something along the back end. And now here we go. So they wanted this piece to be quite symmetrical because their logo is going in the center. I marked off and you can see little pieces of tape so that I would know where the center was so that I would know where to pour these colors out. And I'll be honest, I still struggled. It's very difficult to kind of see when you're down at eye level exactly where you're pouring the paints from up top as i was watching the video i was like oh no molly these are not even at all but i started blowing anyway and you'll see as the video goes along this progression and this took you know hours to get it right fiddling with it between all the paint mixing and everything, multiple hours. So the first side that I worked on there, I liked it, but I realized that I didn't quite blow upward enough. And in the other ones, you'll see I blew upwards a little bit more. And the entire time, I still had to keep in mind exactly where I wanted the logo to go. And that is so difficult to do when there's no markings on the canvas. So I could see already that the way that I was blowing was not very symmetrical. And I knew that it was going to take quite a bit of me working on this to get it to look like something that I liked. I had too much paint on that side, and so I was trying to blow back inward. So I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, and I realized, yep, that first section, I definitely didn't blow out enough. In hindsight, I should have stood on a ladder to check it out and to see exactly what it looked like from above. So I'm just picking out some little pieces, popping some air bubbles, really trying to get this exactly the way that I want it. Trying to work my little curly cues in as well. Trying to figure out how to kind of make it more symmetrical. And again, the entire time, my nerves are just a mess. Every step I was thinking, did I ruin it? Did I not do it enough? What are they going to think? And you just have to find a way to just let those thoughts go. I'm still working on it myself. And now it was time to put the design in the center. 
I made a template and I sketched it on to the canvas and then I taped off the areas and literally hand brushed the entire design in. And then I pulled the tape off and touched up any little edges and got rid of any extra lines that were in there. This process took actually quite some time but I love the crisp edges from taping it off. I tried to freehand it at first, it did not work. So once again, I'm in my house because this is too big to hang up in my garage. But there's each of the sections you can see it even in the light. The silver is really pretty. There's everything dried well. I was so worried. There was so much white paint on there that it wouldn't dry well. And then I did the same thing. I taped off the design. I'll show you what I had to make for it. Oh, I'm in the, I'm in the light. But yeah, that is a four foot by four foot blow out with a logo in the center. I'll show you the, uh, the designs that I made as well. So yes, I'm a maniac. I wanted it to be exact dimensions. So I, for the small one and the big one that I did, I had to make sure that I got the dimensions right. So what I did is I converted everything over, scaled it up, and then I made this huge logo and then I taped this on stenciled it with a pencil I kept it connected here even though you don't see it connected there just so that it wouldn't move and then I taped it all off painted it with a few coats and it's done I wanted to get back over to the original piece well I hope that you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching yep yeah, good painting Bye.